Hi my friends, you are going to learn the bubble sort algorithm in this video from Joey's Tech start to end. Not only that, you will learn how to optimize the bubble sort algorithm as well by the end of this video. So make sure you watch this video till the end. We will sort this array of integers you see over here using bubble sort. So let's dive deep straight into understanding the algorithm. But before we begin understanding the algorithm, there are a couple of statements that you should remember about the bubble sort algorithm. Number one, bubble sort is a simple sorting algorithm that you should not use on large data sets because the average and worst case complexity of bubble sort algorithm are very high. And all that happens in bubble sort is the repeated swapping of adjacent elements if they are in an unsorted order. This is the main mantra of bubble sort algorithm. Now let's practically understand the algorithm. But before that, do hit the like button now only on this video. And if you are new to my channel, then hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to keep receiving notifications of such algorithm videos I create for you. You see, we are going to start from these two elements of the array. We compare 64 against 34. 64 is greater than 34. So what will happen? A swap will happen. Now, if I call this iteration one, then at the end of iteration one, the array will look like this. You see, I did the swapping. Okay. Now in the second iteration, the elements that we are going to compare will be 64 and 25. 64 is greater than 25. Hence a swap will happen again. So at the end of the second iteration, the array will be 34, 25, 64, 12 and 22. Okay. Now in the third iteration, the elements that we are going to compare will be 64 and 12. Again, a swap will happen because 64 is greater than 12. So at the end of this iteration, the array will become 34, 25, 12, 64, 22 okay and uh, this is the output of the third iteration now in the fourth iteration the comparison will happen between these two elements 64 and 22 since 64 is greater than 22 hence the swap will happen again so at the end of the fourth iteration the array will be 34 25 12 22 64 this is the output array that has resulted from these four iterations. Notice that the comparison happened four times when there are five elements in the array. This fact will come into picture when we write the algorithm for the bubble sort. So keep this in mind. You see that the greatest element has reached its final position after these four iterations, but the array is still unsorted. We will have to perform the same comparison and swap operations to sort the remaining elements. Hence, we call this set of four iterations as pass one. Now we begin pass two and the input to pass two will be this array only the output of the pass one. So in the first iteration, 34 and 25 will be compared since 34 is greater than 25. Hence the swapping will happen. So the array will become after iteration one, the first element will be 25, then 34, then 12, 22 and 64. Now in the iteration two, that means in the second iteration of pass two, a comparison between 34 and 12 will happen. Since 34 is greater than 12, hence the swapping will happen. So the array at the end of the second iteration will become 25, 12, 34, 22, 64. All right. Now in the third iteration, 34 and 22 will be compared against each other since 34 is greater than 22 hence the swapping will happen again so the resultant array will be 25 12 22 because the swapping has happened and then 34 and finally 64 in the fourth iteration 34 will be compared against 64 now since 34 is less than 64 Hence, no swapping will happen and this will mark the end of pass two. Now we begin pass three. The input to pass three will be this array. Okay. 
so in the first iteration 25 and 12 will be compared against each other since 25 is greater than 12 hence the swapping will happen so the resultant array will be 12 25 22 34 64 all right now in the second iteration 25 and 22 will be compared since 25 is greater than 22 hence the exchange will take place the swapping will happen so the resultant array will be 12 22 25 34 and 64 okay now in the third iteration 25 and 34 will be compared against each other since 25 is less than 34 hence no swapping will take place so the resultant array will be the same the array resulting from the third iteration of pass 3 will be this and in the fourth iteration 34 will be compared against 64 since 34 is smaller than 64 hence no swapping will happen again so the array resulting from pass 3 will be this all right now let's do pass 4 so this will be the input array to pass 4 in the first iteration 12 and 22 will be compared since 12 is less than 22 hence no swapping will happen so the resultant array will be 12 22 25 34 and 64 now in the second iteration 22 will be compared against 25 since 22 is smaller than 25 hence no swapping will happen okay and the resultant array will be 12 22 25 34 64 now in the third iteration 25 will be compared against 34 since 25 is less than 34 hence again no swapping will happen and the resultant array will be the same it will be 12 22 25 34 64 now in the fourth iteration 34 will be compared against 64 since 34 is smaller than 64 hence no swapping will happen so the output of pass 4 will be the same array because in none of the iterations no swapping has happened all right that was it the array is sorted this array over here as a result of pass 4 is the sorted version of this array let's start writing the algorithm now and let me tell you that there is a lot of optimization left so if you are thinking about leaving the video then i am going to tell you that the bubble sort algorithm is not yet complete so one thing that is clear to us is that when we have five elements in an array then the number of passes will be four why because we need to place four elements out of these five elements at their correct position and the fifth element will automatically be placed at its correct position that is why the number of required passes is four so this means for any n the number of passes will be n minus 1 so let's write a for loop for this so it will be for i equals to 0 semicolon i less than n minus 1 semicolon i plus plus okay so i will start from 0 because the index of an array starts from 0 and in the programming word things get much simpler if we start from 0 only the end condition will be i less than n minus 1 so the loop will run for 0 1 2 and 3 that's four passes awesome within each pass there are four iterations so within the main for loop there will be another for loop and the start and end conditions will be the same so it will be for j equals to 0 semicolon j less than n minus 1 semicolon j plus plus okay now what's happening within each iteration is the element at index i is getting compared with the element at index i plus 1 and if the element at uh, index i is greater than the element at index i plus 1 then the swap happens so we will write if within brackets arr within square brackets j is greater than arr 
within the square brackets j plus one okay within the if block we are going to write the common code to swap the values of two variables so it will be temp equals to arr within square brackets j that means we are assigning the value of arr j to a temporary variable in the next line we are going to write the code in which arr j gets the value of arr j plus one and in the final line of code we are going to assign arr j plus one the value stored in the temp variable and that's it this is the bubble sort algorithm that is going to sort your array but let's go back and check the results again to see if there is any room for optimization look at the output of pass one over here if you notice then pass one brought 64 to the last position which was indeed the largest element of this array then pass two brought 34 to its correct position as the second last element of the array then pass three brought 25 to its correct position as the third element of the array and finally pass four did the same thing to 22 actually it happened in pass three only but in a conventional way pass four is responsible for bringing this element 22 to its correct position the thing to note is that 64 came to its correct position at the end of pass 1 hence in pass 2 this comparison between 34 and 64 done in iteration 4 became useless because the second last element beat any will never be greater than the last element which is 64 and at the end of pass 2 34 got its correct position Hence in pass 3, along with the comparison of 64 and 34 done in the last iteration, the comparison of 25 and 34 became redundant as well, which was done in the third iteration. Because the third last element, 25, will never be greater than the second last element because the second last element is at its correct place. It was placed at its correct position at the end of pass 2. Similarly in pass 3, 25 got its correct position. Hence in pass 4 along with the last two iterations, the comparison done in the second iteration was not required. So the thing to note here is that with every pass, the number of iterations is reducing. In pass 1, all the 4 iterations will be required. But in pass 2, the 4th iteration won't be required. So let me delete it. So you can see that after the swapping of 34 and 22 happens in 3rd iteration, this output array will be generated. Similarly, in pass 3, like I told you before, these two iterations are not required they are redundant so after the swapping happens between 25 and 22 this array will directly be generated okay similarly in pass 4 the final three iterations are not required only the first iteration is required the swapping didn't happen between 12 and 22 but had there been a bigger number than 22 at the first position and uh, the swapping would have happened it would have led to this particular output array so when it's pass one then we are going to have i as zero and the number of iterations that we are going to have will be four zero one two and three when it's pass 2, then i will become 1. And the number of iterations that we are going to have will be 0, 1, and 2. Okay. And when it's pass 3, then we are going to have i as 2. And the iterations that we are going to have will be 0 and 1. And when it's pass 4, then we are going to have i as 3. And the only iteration that we are going to have is zero. Okay. I'm talking in terms of algorithm over here. Hence the end condition of the inner for loop will become J less than N minus I minus one. Okay. 
All right, now there is one more thing that you must have noticed. If you haven't, no worries. Let me tell you. The last swap that happened was in pass three, in the second iteration of pass three. And then you can see that in pass four, even when there was only one iteration, no swap happened. This proved that the array got sorted already at the end of pass three. In this example, pass four was the last pass. But had there been more passes in a longer array, then the comparison in the future passes would no longer be needed. Take a look at this example. There are six elements, so the number of passes will be five. But the array got sorted at the end of pass three only, and in either of the iterations of pass four, no swapping took place. So we can optimize our algorithm to take a signal from pass four. and doesn't execute pass 5 therefore before the inner loop starts a variable should be initialized to false and when the swap actually happens the value of the variable should be changed to true okay but if no swap happens in any of the iterations of a pass then this variable swapped will come out of the inner loop as false and when it happens we break out of the main for loop thus stopping further iterations from happening thus stopping further passes from happening so out of the inner for loop we are going to write if swapped comparison operator false then break and this line of code is going to help the program break out of the main for loop and this completes all the basic optimizations that should be present in the bubble sort algorithm what you are seeing on the screen is the optimized bubble sort algorithm the time complexity of the bubble sort algorithm is big o squared because you can see there are two loops two for loops the worst case time complexity of this algorithm is again big o squared and the worst case occurs when an array is reverse sorted and the best case time complexity is big o of n the best case occurs when the given array is already sorted with this we have come to the end of this video i hope you enjoyed learning the bubble sort algorithm from joey stick do like this video and hit the subscribe button if you haven't already subscribed to my channel do share this video with your friends and colleagues i look forward to helping you with programming and algorithms and i'll see you in the next video of joey stick till then goodbye and take very good care of yourself